In section 10.2, you're going to start learning how powers work and what their properties are. So while each of these may seem easy, when you start putting all these together, this may be challenging for some of you, and that's okay. You will get through it. But I want you to have a clear understanding of what each of these powers say. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to develop two rules ourselves. So I want you in your notes to draw a line down the center of your paper. And I want you first to write on the left side, this is going to be rule number one, and on the right is rule number two. So on the left side, I want you to write x to the third power times x to the fifth power. And I want you to make a guess of what you think that is. What do you think x to the third times x to the fifth power is? Do you think it's x to the fifteenth? Do you think it's 15x? Do you think it's x to the eighth? Well, if we take what we learned in 10.1, 10.1 talks about what exponents mean. And we should know that x to the third stands for x times x times x. The x to the fifth stands for x times x times x times x times x. That is, x times itself five times. If we put this all together, though, how many x's are there? So you can rewrite it as x to the eighth power. So what can you tell me about the powers and then getting an answer of x to the eighth? We added them. So the next thing, let's look at x to the third to the fifth. x to the third to the fifth. Now, how many x to the thirds do you have? You have five of them. So this would be x to the third times 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 x to the third. Now, if you wanted to, you could take each of these x to the thirds and break them down into the three parts. Like, so you could have five parts of three. Now, go back to rule number one. What did we say to do with these powers? We added them. So what do you think you're going to do with all these powers? You're going to add them. So that gives you x to the 15th. So how do you go from this to this? x to the 3rd to the 5th to the 15th? We multiply. So that's your second rule. So let's go over our key ideas. All right, our first property says this. To multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. So here's how it looks. In using numbers, we would say 4 to the second power times 4 to the third power equals 4 to the 2 plus 3, which gives me 4 to the fifth power. Now, if we write that as algebra, in algebra we could say this, a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n because we can add the powers together. Now notice that in here we have the same base. Here we have the same base. Make sure that you understand this only works when you have the same base. Our next property is called the powers of a power property. To find a power of a power, you multiply the exponent. So, for example, in numbers, this would look like 4 to the 6th to the 3rd would equal 4 to the 6 times 3, which would give us 4 to the 18th power. Now, if we wrote that as algebraically or in algebra terms, that would show you that a to the m to the n would equal a to the mn, because you can multiply m times n, which will give you mn. Now, if you're taking the power of a product, which basically means you're doing this and this, you're using both of these together, to find the power of a product, find the power of each factor, and then multiply. So, for example, in math terms, you could write 3 
times 2 to the 5th power. Now you're going to think to yourself, well, I, I can take 3 times 2 and get 6 and 6 to the 5th power. Yes, you can. But what happens when one of those numbers is no longer a number but a variable? And you'll get to that in some examples. So you can take 3 to the 5th power times 2 to the 5th power. In algebraic terms, it would look like this. AB to the m power would give you a to the m power and b to the m power. You take everything in the parentheses to that power. All right, let's start with some examples. Example 1a, we're going to simplify. 2 to the 4th power times 2 to the 5th power. That would give me 2 to the 9th power. Notice we have the same base. We add the powers. A big misconception is people are going to take 2 times 2 and get 4. That's not what you do. These are the base. The base remains the same. Now, you could take 2 to the 9th power and actually take 2 times itself 9 times and get an actual value as well. B. Let's do 3 to the second power to the third power. In this case, we're going to multiply the two powers, which is 2 times 3. That will give us 3 to the sixth power. All right, the next example. x to the third times x to the seventh. x to the third times x to the seventh will give you what? It'd be x to the tenth. We add the powers because you have the same base. D. x to the third to the seventh. We now have a power to a power, which means you multiply. So it would be x to the twenty-first power. E. Negative five times, and then in parentheses, negative five to the sixth power. Do you have the same base? Yes, we do have a base of negative five. If there's no power written though, remember there's always a one there. So in this case, you'd have negative five to the seventh power. And notice I have parentheses around that negative five. It's important that you have the parentheses there. All right, example two, you're still gonna simplify. So we're going to do 2x to the 4th times 3x to the 2nd. When you have multiple terms, like notice now you have coefficients of 2 and 3. These are just basic whole numbers. Now I'm going to show you the long way to do this, what this means. This really means 2 times x times x times x times x, that's 2x to the 4th power, times 3, times x, times x. You could then multiply the 2 and the 3 together and get 6, and then how many x's do you have there? You have 6. So this would become x to the 6th. So you would have 6x to the 6th power. Now to get there, all you do is take 2 times 3, put 6, you have the same base of an x, Therefore, 4 plus 2 is 6. B. 2xy to the third times negative 3xy to the fifth. The first thing we're going to do is you multiply every number that's the coefficient. So we can take 2 times 3. That gives us negative 6. But then you multiply your x's, the same base. What's x times x? You should notice that there are 1's here. So that would give you x squared. We add the powers. y to the 3rd times y to the 3rd would give you y to the 8th. So my answer would be negative 6, x squared, y to the 8th power. Example C, 2x to the third power. 
Big mistake. This is a huge mistake. You do not take 2 times 3. This means that you are taking 2 to the 3rd power and x to the 3rd power. 2 to the 3rd power is 8, and then x to the 3rd power just stays there. So you take 2 to the power of 3, which is 2 times 2 times 2, 8, and then you get x to the 3rd. D, 3, x to the 5th, y, squared. We start off by taking 3 to the 2nd power. 3 to the 2nd power is 9. Then we take powers to powers. So we take 5 times 2, which is 10, and 1 times 2, which is 2. So my answer would be 9x to the 10th, y to the 2nd. Let's make them harder. Let's do negative 2, x, y to the 4th times... 5, x to the second, y to the second. Step 1. You always get rid of exponents first. So we're going to do this because it's to the fourth power. And we're going to do that to the second power. We do each of these terms to the fourth power. If you take a negative, and this may be something you know is a shortcut, it might not be. If you take a negative to an even power, a power of 2, 4, 6, 8, any even power, your answer is going to become positive. If you take a negative to an odd power, your answer will always be negative. So in this case, we take negative 2 to the 4th power. Well, that gives me 16. Then I multiply my powers, power to power. So this will give me x to the 4th because 1 times 4 is 4. We also take 1 times 4 again, so that would give me 16x to the 4th, y to the 4th, times. I now take 5 squared, which is 25, 2 times 2, which is 4, and 1 times 2, which is 2. You now are doing the product, you're doing the rule, where you're going to take the same base, multiply it by itself, you're doing the product of a power. So you're going to multiply your bases together and add the powers. So we're going to start with 16 times 25. 16 times 25 gives you 400. x to the 4th times x to the 4th gives you x to the 8th since we add them. And y to the 4th times y to the 2nd gives me y to the 6th. So my answer would be 400 x to the 8th, y to the 6th. Why don't you try b together or by yourself? I'll put b down, pause the video, and then try it yourself. So there it is, 3y to the 2nd times negative 4xy to the 3rd, all to the 3rd. Pause the video. If you did it correctly, you should get negative 192 x cubed y to the 11th. We start off by looking here, and we don't do anything with the 3y of the second. It comes down. We then take negative 4 to the third power, which is negative 64. 1 times 3, which is 3, and 3 times 3, which is 9. We then multiply negative 64 by 3. That gives me negative 192. x to the third, well, there's no x value over here, so that just comes down as x to the third. And then we add the y powers, which gives you y squared times y ninth. That gives you y to the 11th. We add the powers together. Example number four, and I do want you to write this down. On the left side, you're given some information about details of a computer storage space. Here's the problem. A gigabyte of computer storage is 2 to the 30th power bytes. The details of a computer are shown on the left. How many bytes of total storage space does the computer have? Well, the first thing we're looking at is the total space. The total space of the computer is 64 gigabytes. Each gigabyte is 2 to the 30th bytes. So how many total bytes are there in a computer if each gigabyte has 2 to the 30th bytes? 
Well, you take 64 times 2 to the 30th. Here is the biggest mistake students make. They take 64 times 2. You cannot do that. You absolutely cannot do that. Don't ever do that. That's like taking this. 3 times 2 to the 4th power. You don't take 3 times 2. You do exponents first. So you take 2 to the 4th power and get 16 and take 3 times 16 and go from there. But we're not doing that. In this problem, we have to convert 64 with a base of 2. Remember, we have to have the same base if we want to multiply them together. So, you're going to rewrite 64 as a base of 2. 2 to what power gives you 64? 2 to the power of what number gives you 64? If you take 2 to the power of 6, you get 64. Now we have the same base, which means we add the powers together. So, how many total bytes of storage does this have? We would have 2 to the 36, and we probably should label this, bytes of storage space. And there's your answer.